Hello, and welcome to the Kathleen Spracklin Podcast. I am a woman on a mission to gather a cadre of writers, thinkers, and teachers who are transforming the world one character at a time. And it all starts with one thing, a deep understanding of human motivation, why people do what they do, and the forces that drive them. To gain that understanding, I am mining the intersection of psychology, theology, and philosophy to make you a better writer. This is episode number 86, Breaking a Bad Habit, The Importance of the Zones of Awareness. This is a little note. I was explaining uh, the zones of awareness to someone, and it occurred to me that They become very, very important whenever we're trying to break a bad habit, which will show you a little bit about the applicability of this subject matter to things beyond fiction writing. Although your character might well be trying to break a bad habit as well, but it also applies to us. And the the point that really caught, caught my attention and made me understand more than I had understood in the past is where the bad habit lies in your zone of awareness what is it a is it if it's a rudder trait then it's right there and you can make the correct decision it's in front of your face go go for it make the right decision if you want to make it or if you just sit there and agonize back and forth which one do i want to do well you know that's where the decision is and it's right right there for you to be making it But there are other kinds of bad habits that you're trying to get rid of where it could be that the first time you are aware of it is after you just did it again. Or maybe you weren't even aware of it when you did it again and the following morning it dawns on you, you know, I did that again yesterday. The point being that it might not be in right there smack in the rudder position when you're first starting to try to clear up a bad habit. It could, it's probably not in the pinnacle position because you're aware of wanting to change it. If you were not, that that merely tells you that it has to be at least down in the wing. It can't be up in the pinnacle. So there it is. Let's say it's, it's one of those things where you think about it Sometimes the next day, sometimes, you know, suddenly it dawns on you that three days ago you did it again, whatever it is. The point being that it's not being presented to your conscious mind at the point in time when you're struggling with it, like it might be when you're trying to figure out whether to eat that chocolate brownie or not. No, this is a thing where it's happening outside of your zone of awareness up there in the zone of chaos, and it's a, which means it's a wing trait. So how do you get at a character trait that's in the wing position that, you're, that you want to, want to change? You know you want to change it, but it's just not there where you can get to it. Well, this is where the understanding character trait transitions becomes a very important part because there's actually two ways that you can approach it. So we'll start with the more obvious way. The more obvious way of approaching a wing trait that you would like to change is to start noticing when you have done it. We already know that we're not noticing it until after it's in the past, but we can think about it and start noticing it more and more. We can make a conscious decision to look back over the past day or maybe even over the past four hours if you need to, to say, hmm, did that happen in that time frame? As you do that repeatedly, it, it become you become aware of it more quickly. You, you don't even have to sit yourself down and say, okay, I'm going to review the last four hours to see if it happened. You barely sit down and it's like, okay, it was then, I saw it. And then it moves again. The more you do this, pretty soon it will be like, 
I just did it. Doggone it, I just did it. Oh, I'm trying so hard not to, and I just did it. That's an enormous progress step. A fantastic progress step, because now it's getting very, very, very close to the zone of awareness. And But there's one more stage before it's completely in the zone of awareness. And this occurs at the point where you catch it a split second before you're going to do it, but it's too late, it's already in the action and you do it. It's like you had a hit, no, oh, boom, you did it. And that that can be an incredibly discouraging time point for people. People can say, oh, I was that close, I'll never get it, I'll never get it. No, celebrate those, because that means it is almost into the zone of awareness. You'll have one more that's your first spot in the zone of awareness, but you might not recognize that it's in the zone of awareness because you're not used to it being in the zone of awareness. It's almost like that last one where you get the, the notification as too late to stop the action that's already in progress. This one is you get it just barely in time to stop the action. And you have the chance in there to make a decision, but you got to make it really, really fast. And if that doesn't happen, if you can't pull it off to make it really, really fast, well, then you stumble it into again. Again, that can become terribly discouraging. Don't be discouraged. That means you're just almost solidly into the zone of awareness because that gap will widen and widen and widen. And then pretty soon, it'll be just like that brownie. You want to eat it or you're going to forego it? You want to go off the handle and yell or are you going to hold yourself? That, it will stare now. It's in your zone of awareness. Okay, now all of the books that tell you how to tackle and achieve something that's in your zone of awareness can come into play because only now, when it's really in your zone of awareness, can you make a decision to make a change. Okay, I promised you there were two ways. There is another way, but it's a little bit more challenging and you might need my new book. If you've been watching my podcast at all, you know that I have a new book that's coming out in two days. It's coming out Monday, April 22nd, 2024, almost here. If you have this book, you can identify which character trait is involved in the problem that you're facing. And let's say it's self-control um, and you just blurt out angrily and you discover that you really want to work on self-control, but it's out of your reach because it's up there in the wing traits. Well, you, you can look at some very, very, very fascinating but true thing that you'll find out when you start putting this stuff into practice. Self-control is a part of the balance group, which is how you relate to living within yourself, and it's part of the self-regulation subgroup and in that subgroup that is keeping control of yourself and that's the very place where you're having the problem if you're if say for example that your problem is in self-control well believe it or not there you can work on one or the other of the other character traits in that self-regulation group and it can help you Get a handle on self-control, believe it or not. Any improvement that you make in any one of these um, self-regulation character traits will help you bring your self-control into the zone of chaos. It might not be obvious, but when you try it out, you'll find that it actually does work. So these character traits can have a lot of, uh, can be pretty valuable. Uh, you know, it doesn't fall in the self-help genre, but um, it certainly gives you some information and some things to think about that do indeed fall in that self-help genre. Okay, so watch out for Monday. I will have a link. And right now, just a quick, quick look. It's just about your last chance to sign up for the early bird list 
because the book will go on sale Monday. Talk to you later.